The Indians gave him the name of Washtaho Wumbly, he who flies across the world lifting his voice to bring good tidings of truth. A very appropriate name for bringing good tidings of truth well describes the divinely ordained mission of Spencer W. Kimball. The roots of this great man extend to noble progenitors, to Heber C. and Anne Alice Kimball, his grandparents, and to Andrew and Olive Woolley Kimball, the parents who welcomed him into their family in 1895. Thatcher, Arizona was the childhood home of young Spencer. Here he accepted and cultivated the blessing of hard work. In fact, in later years, he attributed his lack of height to his older brothers who made him work so hard slopping the hogs that it took all of the growth out of him. Most of the loves that marked his life began their development here in Arizona. A love for the land, difficult though it was to master. In later years, when he became owner of a plot of soil, he reverently picked up a handful of earth and said, this is my land. A love for his nation inspired a poetic effort in the third grade. I love the name of Washington. I love my country too. I love the flag, the dear old flag of red and white and blue. A love of learning also developed in his Arizona youth. He graduated from Thatcher Public School in 1910 and four years later graduated with highest honors from Gila Academy, where he served as student body president, was a star forward on the basketball team, and once, along with all the senior class boys, was expelled for an April Fool's prank of sloughing. Next day, after a proper apology, they were reinstated. Another love that found much nourishment in the Arizona desert of his boyhood was his enduring love for the Lamanites. These gentle descendants of Lehi who came to play an important part in his life and he in theirs. A love for the church and of service to it found a strong beginning in Spencer's youth. For years he had a record of perfect attendance at Sunday school and primary. One Monday, he was in the field tramping hay for his older brothers when the meeting house bell rang for primary. Spencer paused in his work. I've got to go to primary. You can't go today. We need you. Well, Father would let me go if he were here. Father isn't here, and you're not going. The piles of hay came pouring up, literally covering Spencer. But finally, he caught up on his part of the work slid noiselessly from the back of the wagon and was halfway to the meeting house before his absence was noticed. His perfect record remained unbroken. Devotion to the church continued. In 1914, he was called as a missionary and sent to the Central States Mission where he served with distinction. At the time of his release, he was serving as president of the Missouri Conference or district. After his mission, Spencer returned home to attend the University of Arizona. At this time was introduced another of his loves that would last a lifetime and beyond. Camilla Eyring, a teacher at Gila Academy. She and her family had come with the saints in the Mexican exodus, fleeing from the armies of Pancho Villa. Before long, Spencer was checking the time of day often, for in his pocket watch, he carried a picture of Camilla. In November of 1917, they were married and eventually were blessed with four children. A business career in banking, insurance, broadcasting, and other enterprises had to compete with an increasing career in the church as stake clerk, counselor in the stake presidency, and as stake president. In 